learn a new programming language by answering questions for it on Stack Overflow when I start from not really knowing anything about it. Um, but I'm going to just go through and check up on what's happened to my Stack Overflow answers from yesterday first. Let's have a look at that. Okay, I got plus 11 here. Uh, 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 okay, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, what people say? Same error. Can you demonstrate how you do it? Uh, AMD module type. Yeah, can't really help you with that. Let's have a look here. Same error. Can you demonstrate how you do it? Uh, can I open this JS fiddle? Uncaught in promise. Play failed because the user didn't interact with the document first. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, this is cool. Okay. Um, where do I see the error message? Maybe more tools, developer tools? Where? In the console? Oh, there's a console down here. Fathom is not defined. Running fiddle. Let's get rid of that one. Just use this. Okay, music is playing. Huh. Some music just played in my headset. Um, yeah, it played. Let's have a look in here. Okay. Can I format the code in here? Run, save, embed. Nope. What does this do? Tidy. There you go. Clean as you go. Okay. So... The problem is, uh, this guy's person is um, Portuguese speaker, maybe from Brazil or Portugal. Okay, mouse over sound. Okay. So where's the play promise in here? on mouse over, click, sound, play, clip. Okay, this is, um, this code is not very well commented. You know, I'm like looking at it going like, what am I looking at? If you want someone to help you to fix something, you've got to really like put them on the target. Oh, dude. Create sound bite. Where does that get called from? Here we go. Here, uh, mouse over sound, click sound. On mouse over, click sound, play clip. Okay, I mean, works for me. Your JS fiddle plays sound for me in Google Chrome when I mouse over the button. Um, can you give me step by step instructions to reproduce the error that you are getting so I can debug it? Add a comment. All right, what else? Okay, let's go back to the tags. I'm going to answer a few JavaScript questions just to warm up, and then I think I'm going to do Dart. Dart is a language I always wanted to learn. Um, negative two votes. Oh, I'm all about it. If I can get a negative two vote question and get negative votes on my answer. Okay. This question needs debugging. Link is a line of code. Lol. Um, yeah, I can't answer it, so I'm not going to bother. Get rid of that one, get rid of this one. Let's keep it nice and clean. All right, JS date calculator of delta time between users enter date and today's date. Calculator, yeah, okay. Uh, let's have a look. 
DayJS is the solution to this. Yeah, okay. It doesn't say what environment it's in. But if he has a user calculator that he's getting input from, it's probably in um, uh, the browser. So DayJS is the solution. It's a two kilobyte library that you can use to do all kinds of date related stuff. It's awesome. Get started. Okay. Um, query, get and set, parse, manipulate, subtract. Uh, pars. Okay, let's go back here. So, diff days. So, where does he get the date from? So, today is the new date, and then he's like doing some weird stuff with that. Okay, prompt, prompt, prompt. Why, 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 why? This is not a good naming. 60% of uh, programming is correctly naming your entities. Okay, um, let's do it like this. We can use the Visual Studio Code. Uh, 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 is it going to open my previous project, my Stack Overflow stuff? Yes. Okay, npm, pnpmi. So pnpm uh, caches the things on your machine. So if I've already got it installed on my machine, it's kind of like globally installing it, but you can use it locally in packages. Oh, I'm behind the times. Got to get with that. Okay. So let's call this one date.ts. Yeah. Drop this in here. Nope. Copy. Okay. Why doesn't it like that? Weird. Okay, here's the real easy way to do it. You just do it like this. Okay, so if I import DayJS from DayJS, like that, and then I just go today equals DayJS. Pretty sure that's how you do it. What's that return? Yep. And then I've got to get a date from someone. So we do this. Okay, now I'm not going to be able to... Okay, so this should be year. This should be called month. And this should be called day. And then I'm going to say var. Now these should be const. Always use const. Unless it's actually a real variable. Okay, so... Um, here we say user date equals dayjs. So, don't know about this, um, whether, let's just see what happens. Because this is the American order, which means that this programmer is probably from America or maybe Canada. I'm not sure if they share the same one. Um, what was I thinking? So that should be month, huh, day, year, like that. And then we're going to go const difference equals. Now let's consult this library here. So I can subtract seven years. Mm, list of all available units. Anyway, how about if I create a new... Yeah, okay. String. String plus format, a new date. Okay, date, uh, year, month, day. New date, year, month, day. Ta-da! Okay. 
Okay, I'll ignore that for the time being. Um, okay, so how do we do query? Query, as before, is the difference between, no, display, manipulate, subtract, get and set. Durations. That looks like it. Humanize, subtract time. Uh, DayJS durations. Using duration with diff. X dot diff y. Okay. Um, click. Nope. Diff. Manipulate. Diff. Query. Diff. Nope. Okay, whatever. So x diff y. So I should just be able to do, um, let's call it now instead of today. Now. Now dot diff user date. Like that. And then, you know, I just console log the difference. Difference like that. Okay, so I'll comment that out, and then what I'll do here is instead of using those, um, I'll just do const year equals 2020, const month equals 1, and const day equals 1 also. Okay, and then if I just run tdate.ts, I get, okay, so that's probably in milliseconds, right? What format is he looking for it in? Days. Um, difference. Mm. So if I go dayjs.days, no. Let's go back to the documentation. So, display. Oh, okay, time from X. Well, that looks pretty cool. A from B. So, I should go user date from now instead. Yeah, I'll try that. User date from from hmm. it's a day js day js doesn't like that what doesn't it like about it property from does not exist oh the relative time plugin okay Relative time plugin. Okay. Uh -uh. Oof. Uh, the typing's not updated, so I'm just going to have to take the typecast. Yeah, take the type checking off it just to test it. Six months ago. Is that right? Roughly. Kinda. Day JS2 now. Okay, so. List of breakdown range. Um, returns a string of relative time from now, extend, if you pass in true, you get the value without the suffix. The base strings are localized, okay, they can be customized, time is rounded to the nearest second. But how do I, time from x, how do I get the relative time? Is there a way for me to specify the, like the precision 
without suffix, compared, string of relative time to now. Okay. Time to now. Well, you could really even just go like, um, like this. See what that does. In six months, Q plus, let's turn this thing on. So we'll just run it in here and I don't have to keep running it. Quokka, that's the Quokka plugin. Runs the code in the in the file. It's awesome. Um, okay, so well, the user date is like well. What if I just say two? What does that do? Execute. Okay. Two now from now, six months ago, pretty easy, so I can get rid of that, um, okay, but he wants it in days, okay, so let's find out how to get it in days. Buddhist era. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. Durations. Okay, so yeah, I did subtract time. Uh, goodness. It was difference, I think. So it was like, I need to bring back my now then. And user date dot difference. Diff. Now. Get rid of this. No, so I say now dot diff user date. And that gives me like, I think that's epoch seconds or maybe milliseconds. So I need to convert duration as milliseconds. Okay, duration as days. Dot duration as days. That returns a number. length of the duration in days, so I need to create a duration using duration with diff okay so I just wrap it with this dayjs duration what? Um, okay, what if I say as any? No, it doesn't actually exist. Okay, so DayJS has what? Hmm. Nope. Okay, um, diff? What is it, duration? Mm, what if I do it like this? Nope. What if I do it like this? What can I import? No. Okay. Time is hard. Time is hard. A Babylonian system based on base 60, base 12. Um, 12 fives is 60. It's not decimal. 365 days, 7 days in a week. 12 unequal months in a year. It's crazy. Base 12. It must be... No, no not necessarily because there were less before because December means tw 10, November 9, October 8, September 7. Um, let's have a look. Why this duration is not there? Let's have a look at that. You can also use duration with DayJS 
Jeff, so I'm answering this person's question, but I'm also educating myself about the DayJS library. I know about its existence. I've used it previously, but for you know pretty simple things, um, usually humanizing dates. I haven't really done differences like this. So this duration thing, so durations, do I need to import a plugin? I need to import a plugin. Okay, that's why. So then I'm gonna need to extend it with that plugin as well. Duration, bam, now it works. There we go. And then we wanna get the days. So, days, how do I get the days out? So, uh, display, get, days, weeks, week year, get set, day, day of year, day of week, day of month. Now it's duration, so it'll be under duration. Durations, days. As days. As days. Boom. 175 days. Okay. So now I take out the this stuff, which is um my stuff. const dayjs equals require okay uh, yeah that's good so now I just copy that I can go back here dun 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 one more comment okay um, you can do this easily using the DayJS library. It is only 2K. So it won't make your page that much bigger, but it will make your life A lot simpler fact okay so enter code here bam Meh. oh oh yuck how do I insert a snippet instead a snippet block quote code sample snippet here we go Drop that mofo in there. Um, add an external library. So let's go to DayJS, installation, browser. CDN package. Dun, dun, dun. Add external library. Punch it in there, say so okay to that. And then, hmm. Uh, run. Yeah, there's no require here. Let's have a look. Okay, but how do I add the plugins? Plugins. Loading a plugin in the browser. Here we go. Yeah, okay, like that. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I need to do this. Control C, Control V. Mm, what does it look like? Forward slash plugin, forward slash name JS. There, so we're going to go forward slash plugin. Oh, yeah, okay, so like this. Draw C. 
relative time.js and then same thing for the duration. We'll see. And then we need to extend it with this. Here. Okay. Window.dayjs plugin duration. Where? Not what I want to do. This. Relative time. Like that. Should be able to take that out. I don't need this. And run. It should now work into the year 2020. Okay. Into the month, one. Into the day. Day.js duration is not a function. So it didn't get extended. Okay. What happens if I put that here? Run. Script error. Mm. Show the console, yeah. Okay. Debugging console.log window dot day js. Uh, just console log the window. Run. Waiting for stack snippets. Okay, here we go. Location, blah, blah, blah. Window, document, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. Anything else? Day.js plugins. Okay, scripts. So the scripts are there. Window. Uh, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Oh, it's a lot of stuff. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, in the global scope. Let's try this. Well, yeah. Let's just see if run undefined. So that does not exist. Let's see if DayJS exists. Run. Okay. So there's definitely that function there. Okay. Loading the plugin in the browser. DayJS plugin underscore, yeah. Duration, relative time. Okay. So that does exist. Mm. Okay, so I'll do it like this. Um, Object.keys on the window. Filter. Key. Key dot starts with DayJS. It's the end of the filter and then the end of the console dot log run. DayJS, DayJS plugin relative time. So relative time does exist, but duration does not exist. Okay, so I got the wrong CDN for duration. Loading a plugin in the browser. Okay, so durations. Durations. Depending on the duration plugin to work. DayJS plugin duration. Does this URL exist? Cannot find it. Okay. 
What if I, can I list the directory? No, yeah, I can, okay, that's cool. Okay, no duration. Maybe it's in the latest version. Yeah, okay. 1830. It's a version problem. So we can do like this. Meal cooked and ready to eat. This is a complete working example for this uh, programmer. 2020. 1, 1. Bam. Diff days is not defined. My bad. Run. 2020, 1, 1. Bam. Okay, so um, let's go all the way, hey? So math dot round difference. I don't know, is it like zero? Um, days. Let's try that. 2020, 1, 1. Nice. Okay, save and insert into post. Okay, and then we've got to give them a link to the DayJS library. See? Here is a fully working example for the browser. Uh, we don't need this uh, thing here. My debugging statement. Get rid of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah, leave it that way. Leave it like that. Post your answer. Bam! You can do this easily using the DayJS library. It's only two kilobytes, so it won't make your page that much bigger, but it will make your life a lot simpler. Here's a fully working example for the browser. Zegut, Zegut. Someone gave him a negative one. Let's go back up. I thought his question was pretty good. I learned a lot. And that's the most important thing. Okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. Problem with returning variable MySQL. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, okay. Function status. How to make the returning variable O from function inside the query. Oh, this looks interesting. Okay. Yeah, you got to make it into a promise. Okay, so function status s. So the first thing is that since it's going to be a promise, it's going to look like this. Here, we're going to return a new promise. We can make it easy with async await. I'll do that in a minute. I'll just do this first. So resolve or reject. Standard promise kind of construction. Okay. Okay. 
like that. Okay, so we now have this promise machinery. We're returning the promise machine. So here we don't need this O. And here we go if E we um, reject with E. And not only that, we should return reject E so that we exit execution from this scope. Okay. And actually we can do it as a ternary, so we can go return E. If there is an error, we reject, otherwise we're going to return this. In which case, we resolve the promise with that value. Like that. Now, since we've done that, we can go here and make this into actually a single line like this. Bam. Mm. Okay, so in fact what we could do here is what's happening is that So again, Like that. Where does N come from? I don't know. I'm just drawing this code out a little bit more or refactoring it for conciseness. So here we go templated string like that. Okay. And then so this makes it easier here because now I can say like this, but I should give it a better name. just to make it a bit more kind of readable. Four, indentation with four is quite a lot. Anyway, two, two is better or three. Uh, make it as if it does not equal, so I'll put the exit case at the top. Um, undefined, or that, yeah, just move the com remove complexity. Um, okay, so, uh, da -da, don't even, uh, yeah, I need return to get the ternary. Oh, I see, here, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Could even do it like this. 
which makes it a bit easier because then we can remove one scope level like this boom actually you know we could um, if I did this then I can do this which means I can remove that and that I know I'm a functional pro I'm, I'm into functional programming so I tend to like reduce everything down into these like simple functions like this In that case, um, okay, so I can see a, a further like crystallization of this thing that can take place, which is that the, the complexity of this here, because I'm passing this down into it and then I'm just doing this, I could do const do query equals and it needs to take, what does that query take? It needs an S and then if it gets an S And that's where I would need to construct this. Like that. In which case this would come out of here and go to there. And then that's the machinery for the actual query because you see here we don't need this so we'd just go like this. So if it does equal that then we return do query, pass an S, and if not, promise.resolve undefined. This makes it easier for this person because it's like, how does it behave if you don't pass in a query? And then we can get rid of that. See query. That's the end of the query and then the end of the promise like that. We can get rid of that. If there's an error we reject, if there's no error we resolve it with the, something from the result. Yep. To actually make the query we just punch it into here and we do that. And then there's status there. So what I've done is like the, I've, I've separated the machinery of managing like the decision flow out of the, into functions, it's all functional. Um, okay. Okay. Here is an example, an example, I've also refactored the program flow, flow control to the functional level. BAM! 
So that's one. Let's do another one. We'll do it using async await. Edit. Here is the same thing using async and await. Okay, so um, same thing here. We, we need to go uh, control X. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay, I did control Z. That works. Whatever. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Ha. Huh. X is here. Nope, that's not X. That's X. Status dot then console log. Okay. So we need to mark this as an async function. No, we can't use async await because this query thing is... um. Yeah, okay. So I could say... You can do the same thing using async and await if the query function uh, has a promise interface. Has a promise interface in addition to the to the error first callback. Uh, callback one that you are using at the moment. Save the edits. Okay, I got one response. Uh, oh, okay. So what happens when you don't uh, uh, read the question. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see if this works. Give this guy an upvote if this one works. I'm not going to spend any more time on that one. 206. Um, it doesn't seem right. Are we 206 days into the month? Into the year? We're in week 25. So, if we're in week 25, uh, 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 25 times 7. What's that? Hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, okay. Add a comment. Um, the correct answer rounded to zero decimal places is currently one seventy six. See my working code below using DayJS. And gives two oh six. Just make sure that I got that right. Asks for a year. Yep, month, day. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay. Add comment. Rob J. Same guy who hated on my answer gave an answer that doesn't work. 
Yeah. You're welcome. Haters gonna hate. Next. I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna... Let's get a new one. Hot off the press. One more and then I'm gonna switch to doing Dart. Should I always compile AJV schema in Express? I have looked at that AJV before. Validator. Jason Validator. Validate the request bodies of my Express app. To use a validator, compile the schema, then run the validation like this. Should I always compile the validator when my endpoints? No. Okay. You should compile it once outside the handler and reuse the compiled one. This will improve performance. Boom. Edit. Outside the route handler. You're welcome. That was an easy one, so let's try another one. This one looks good. Oh, it has an answer already. Let. Disgusting. Oh, let's have a look at this. This is interesting. Array literal notation. Okay. New array. Weird. Um, yeah. Text prediction in Storyline 3. Well, that's pretty cool. Got no idea what that is. So I should look at it. Artificial intelligence. Yes, the future. Need to implement text prediction in Storyline 3. Is there a way to implement AI-based sentence auto-completion capabilities in Storyline 3? For example, like Gmo has a feature. Yeah, okay. Uh, pretty broad. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't even know what Storyline 3 is. Let's have a look. Storyline 3. Interactive e-learning with Storyline 3. It's pretty cool. Um, text prediction. Predictive text. Pixel 3, no, it doesn't look like anyone's talked about it. Buy license. Ah, uh, nah. No, sorry. Forget it. How to call two async functions after each other. Yuck. Mmm. Okay. React Native. Interesting. Uh, map region latitude is not set. Okay, he gets that. Uh, mm. Yeah, disgusting, the code editor in here. Um, ooh, you know what would be pretty cool would be to have a, um, a project for downloading, like, opening Stack Overflow questions in... Visual Studio Code. Has someone already written that? Let's have a look. There'll be one for searching for sure, but... Stack Overflow. Search Stack Overflow. It 
get Stack Overflow answers right into your text editor and search for solutions easily. Search for errors. Integrated solution for searching and finding. How does this work? Hmm. Well, that's quite cool. Quickly paste code from Stack Overflow. It's mostly about getting stuff from Stack Overflow into here, more than generating. Anyway, um, I think that's going to be it for now for answering Stack Overflow questions. This would be a good one, actually. This code is like it. it this is the one of the essential refactoring patterns. Asynchronous promises. Problem. People struggle with that in uh, JavaScript programming. But I'm going to leave that one for now, and I'm going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to come back and see if I can learn how to program in Dart using Stack Overflow questions as my kind of like lens or pathway to navigate Dart programming. I'll be back.